really excited about uh, what's about to occur here in our bicentennial event. As many of you are aware, uh, we had a time capsule that was buried during the sesquicentennial at the corner of High and Hanover Streets. In front of you seats the time capsule, or sits the time capsule. But before we get started with that, um, the Montgomery County Commissioner's here, Commissioner Castor and Commissioner Dr. Arcusha are here to make a presentation, so I'd ask them to both come forward. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Val Arkush, the Vice Chair of the Board of Commissioners, and I'm joined here with Commissioner Castor. Uh, we send uh, the regrets of our Chairman Josh Shapiro, who could not be here this afternoon. One of his children is sick, and he's very, very sorry not to be here for this. But we want to just tell you how excited we are about this day. Uh, the county is honored to be able to support two projects that are absolutely critical to Pottstown, the Carousel and the Coburgdale Railroad. These are two projects that have been in the works for several years, and we as the county have been able to now commit the last $250,000 in grant money to each of these projects through our redevelopment authority. And I just want to highlight uh, the president of that, our chairman of our authority, Jerry Nugent. Thank you so much for being here. And it, this, these dollars will help bring these projects to completion. We view Pottstown as the Western Gateway to Montgomery County. Investment in this area is one of our top priorities. We have our community college here, we have Potts Grove Manor, and the, these two new projects will help bring all of those works together to make this one of the top tourist destinations in the western part of the county, and we are thrilled to be a part of that. We also are so happy to be able to invest in projects that bring the entire community together. We know that these projects are going to be sustainable over the long term and be very successful because so many people in the community have come together with great passion and great deliverance to make these things work together. So thank you all for being here today. We'll be presenting those checks shortly. But first I'd like to turn it over to my fellow commissioner, Bruce Castor. Thank you, Val. They, they, they had the lower microphone here for you. But, but, uh, um, I, I, I know I speak for uh, uh, Commissioner Shapiro and uh, Commissioner Arkush when I say that this is not about us uh, in Montgomery County, uh, in the county government. This is about celebrating what's being done out here in, Potts, in Pottstown. Uh, and we are very, very ha happy that we can be part of that. Um, I was here for when the when we kicked off the, the miniature golf, uh, when, we, when we kicked off the, uh, the college, when we kicked off the borough hall, uh, when we kicked off the rail, railroad, uh, I was here and, and, uh, and saw the, the magnificent work uh, at, at the uh, carousel and took all those things back to the county and my fellow commissioners um, had the same excited reaction that I did. And this is because the government here, the council here in, in Pottstown, the mayor, the administration, uh, the, the borough manager, the private sector, all of you, it's because you came together, put the thought in necessary to make this the gateway that Val talked about uh, coming from the west uh, and put a whole lot of things here. The Schuylkill River Trail is close by and that will drive people to Pottstown and when they're here having a good time, they're going to patronize the restaurants and the uh, and the shops and enjoy the enjoy the recreational activities and all of those things will continue the 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 wonderful revitalization of Pottstown. Many of you know that I'm in my 31st year with Montgomery County, so I have a long history of seeing what Pottstown was and what it has become. And the people here should be very very proud of what they have accomplished. I see former borough manager Jones back there. He's probably hiding in incognito. Thank you for coming, Admiral. Uh, this is a great day uh, for Pottstown, and, and it, is not, it is not us politicians that are taking the credit for it. It should be all of you that are taking the credit for it because you made this happen. I'm very, very proud of it, and I love coming out here. I only live 20 minutes away, and I'm going to continue to, to, to keep coming out here as often as you invite me. Thank you so much.
So we have two checks here, uh, one to each organization. I just want to also give a shout out to our Director of Commerce for the county, Carolina DiGiorgio. Raise your hand. And together, everyone help pull this together and make this happen. Let's, let's sign the checks. Otherwise, the bank won't take these checks, you know. <laughs> All right. Jordan, if you want to come on up. Okay, heard the, say, Should we do them one at a time, or you want to do them together? Go ahead. Go ahead. Should we do them one at a time? Okay, great. Jerry, come on over. sales insurance his whole career really got to me. Congratulations. How you doing? Congratulations. See if I can get this in the car on the way home. So uh, if not, we'll fit it in the train. It's in Memorial Park as we speak. Um, I just want to say a few words in, in thanks, uh, and I know that I speak for, for George and the carousel in this thanks that I, I'd like to offer, that uh, I'm from Pottstown as well, and commissioners, friends, and fellow Pottstownians, this is truly an auspicious day for our community. A half century ago, those who stood in our shoes made a determination about how they wished to be remembered by placing within a cornerstone these tokens about their legacy. Today, we celebrate what we intend to be our legacy, not by laying mementos in a box, but through laying a new foundation for what is really going to be a better Pottstown. Even with the clarity of hindsight, change is neither easily understood nor progress easily defined. Figuring out what builds a community or tears a community down is truly a complex consideration. And absent a crystal ball, even the best plans are at their base driven by hope. We have very, very strong reasons for hope in this community. I'm a railroader, as the outfit probably belies, uh, and I live in a community built at least by railroads in part, and I'm thus an antiquarian. But even as an antiquarian, and perhaps particularly as an antiquarian, I say to you that the prospects for Pottstown's future are infinitely brighter today than they were 50 years ago. That's in no way to suggest that we're without challenges. When I started this project, I had a lot more hair. But rather it is to suggest that the reason to celebrate what's coming rather than to lament what's gone are greater now than at most any time in our living memory. That remarkable fact is thanks entirely to the strong metal of this community then as now. The leadership of the Montgomery County Commissioners, Commissioner Shapiro, Commissioner Castor, Commissioner Arkush, the dedication of the borough council and staff, and the indefatigable spirit of all those who have reinvested in this community in the multiple senses of that term, including each of you who have come out to the event today, mean that 50 years from now, our successors will identify this as a foundational moment in the history of Pottstown. I thank the commissioners for their support and believing in us in this investment. We will not let you down. Thank you. Hi, folks. I'm going to keep this very, very brief. Okay, thank you. And uh, naturally, my name is George Wasnock, president of the Carousel Pottstown. Like I told our great county commissioners here last week, I felt like Michael Angelo for all these years. When, you know, when are we going to get that done? But thanks to their support and recognizing Pottstown, 
especially the Western Gateway to Montgomery County, and we thank them for their support. We're finally going to get this thing spinning, but what I need now are some people that are able to shellac animals for me. So <laughs> we need to get these animals shellac by November, so please see one of the carousel members. We appreciate your support and your help. Thank you. Congratulations, George, Nathaniel, commissioners, thank you very much. Moving on to the event of the day, um, before we get started, I'm going to ask Mr. Taroni, Council President Taroni, to come up, but before we get started, I just got a call from the mayor. Um, she said to express her condolences, but she's tied up with a family event, so she will not be able to be here today. She has made some comments to uh, reporter Evan Brand at the Mercury in hopes that they're published in the paper. I introduce Council President Stephen Taroni. Thank you, Mark. Uh, once again, on behalf of Pottstown Council and Mayor Sharon Thomas, I would like to thank the Montgomery County Commissioners for their continued support of Pottstown and our efforts in economic revitalization. As Mark stated, my name is Stephen Taroni. My close friends call me Fire, and I have served on council for 17 years, the last six years as council president. I want to thank everyone for attending Pottstown's Carousel of Flavor and our bicentennial ceremony. I have a few words, I uh, will be brief. Uh, the rain is impending. Since I know everyone is anxious to come up and look at all the items from 1965. My recollection of 1965, I was a sixth grader attending Upper Potts Grove Elementary School. My hair was brown, but even back then I had better, very little hair. Always having a buzz haircut. I guess my parents were preparing me for later on in life. But I also remember the parade. I remember uh, men and women wearing period clothing from, 1900, from the 1900s throughout the year. Men with beards, known as Brothers of the Brush, and many, many fond memories of Pottstown during that period that I won't discuss now. But what I remember most of all, it was a much simpler time. Today, just as they did in 1965, we are here to remember and cherish memories of Pottstown and learn some new history from the opening of this time capsule just as Pottstonians will do 50 years from now at the Sester Centennial. As we open this time capsule, there are many uh, items placed by individuals placed, or that are here today, but there are also many items by loved ones who are no longer with us. But all these items represent cherished memories and the history of Pottstown. In today's hectic lifestyle, all too often, it's easy to Google something Find an answer or anything by using one's iPhone. Answer found, minutes later forgotten. No cherished memories to pass on. That's why we are here today, to see and touch history from 1965 and experience cherished memories. Cherished memories also need to be passed on by grandparents during lunch, or a parent fishing with their child on the Manitoni, or while riding through the secret valley on the Cobrickdale train, or on a hand-carved animal on the carousel. Each generation passing on family history, only known to them, on to the next generation. History being created, cherished memories remembered. In closing, it's often stated that youth is wasted on the young, and I didn't understand that until I became a retired senior citizen, and I understand it every morning. But with that said, it, what is very sad, and all too often, family history is lost with the passing of the elderly. Cherished memories forgotten. Don't let this happen. Pass it on, preserve cherished memories, and make history contribute to the Sester Centennial time capsule to be open in 2065. Thank you. At this time, we, it's my honor, tremendous honor, to uh, present and have Ron Downey uh, do a reading. This, Ron Downey was a former, former counselor, and, and it was my honor to serve with him for many years. So I will turn this over to Ron. Anchored dreams. Europeans used muscle shoulders and arm strength to paddle swift wa river waters upstream against the current, their sea journey fully filled of fear behind them now, sought beyond today, 
each tomorrow filled their dreams. For Ian's horizons were only seen by those in tribal dress. Moccasins saw footprints rarely compacted moist river soils, but tracked those wilds along animal trails long of overuse. Clash of cultures lasting many centuries. Will this never end? Hamlets developed, adventurers weary of always on the move needed to settle, so they chose a confluence of river and creek, like the Schuylkill where it accepts the Manitoni was obvious. Strong muscled flow of water harnessed to drive great stone wheels. Grist millers needed farmers, both needed haulers and users. In its infancy, communities struggled, seeking strength to endure. A countryside full of families with hamlets of extended members were not communities. They buried their own, needed no preacher. It's when people no longer did personal items for themselves, services were rendered by others. A barber, a baker, a butcher, a storekeeper, a preacher, and at the end of life, a grave digger. Commerce erupts as people sell their time for tradable sum. Those engines of service got travelers to settle down in a pleasant, hospitable community. The need for organization became apparent and was met by the Potts family, who formulated a town on paper. They called it Potts Grove, until it officially became Potts Town in 1815. Shaken by a revolution, she survived a civil war participated in the First World War, and was seared by the Great Depression. By then, an engine of economic muscle, Pottstown spearheaded a home front industrial movement, carrying USA through World War II. The last seven decades post-World War II, horrific turmoil was everywhere. Korea, Vietnam, harnessing nuclear proliferation, the Twin Towers, then quickly Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan. Today, Iran is the problem. Pottstown grew to 32,000 citizens, but now it's back down to 22,000. From afar, the world churns, but here, churning occurred from exodus. Bypasses took cars, malls took people, and factories took employees. Suburbs attracted homeowners, professionals sought lower taxes. Once the epicenter of an industry and commerce, Pottstown left a shell. White flight, green flight, religious flight followed each other to the suburbs, left behind the poor, the indigent, and needy, all struggled to pay taxes. Pottstown became a victim of Montgomery County's prosperity. Once the engine of financial muscle, weary Pottstown limped on. Community, community is a dream of people who can afford purchase services while residing in an inhabitant's close enough to easily accept them. Government needs to spend its energy on accommodating both. This age-old formula has worked as long as people gather together. In a changing world, a community is just like a canary in a mine. It reflects change change of weather patterns, of lifestyles, of policing, of services, and of social mores. It is a composite of the current ones who reside here. Communities are dynamic. They pulsate. They are alive. 
Pottstown is becoming a college town, a place where knowledge matters. Our dynamic public school system and Wincraw, the Hill School, the Montgomery County Community College. A mind is too valuable to waste is a Pottstown motto. At one time, through Pottstown, a north-only railroad operated. No schedule, no tracks, just the trodden few seeking freedom's trail. We have exhibited a resilience equal to the grit of our storied citizens. Today, we'll hear from some of them words of old at rest these many years. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. We'll make sure a copy of that is put into our Sester Centennial time capsule. Now we have historical remarks from Posco Manor curator Emmy Reese. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you so much for having Pottsgrove out here today. Uh, as all of you know, uh, Pottsgrove Manor was the home of John Potts, iron master and founder of Pottstown. The Potts family was of Welsh descent, and John's father, Thomas Potts, left Wales in 1698 and settled in Germantown, Pennsylvania. John Potts was born in Philadelphia in 1710, and by 1725, his father was iron master of Colbrookdale Furnace. John learned the iron trade at his father's furnace throughout his young life and became an iron master in his early 20s. In 1734, he married Ruth Savage, granddaughter and daughter of the first Iron Masters of Pennsylvania, Thomas Rudder and Samuel Savage. Together, they had 13 children who all survived to adulthood, 74 grandchildren, over 200 great-grandchildren. In November of 1751, John Potts purchased two tracts of land from Samuel McCall, Jr. This land, situated at the confluence of the Manitoni Creek and the Schuylkill River, comprised 995 acres and had been part of a tract of 14,000 acres, once known as McCall's Manor. John chose this location because it was situated near the center of his iron empire. He originally called his plantation Pottsylvania, but changed the name to Potts Grove after his name and the grove of apple trees that was on the property. Construction of his early Georgian mansion began in 1752. In November of 1761, he contract, contracted Benjamin Lightfoot to survey and lay out a town in the common grid plan like Philadelphia. This land was on the east of the Manitoni Creek. He stipulated that the main street be 100 feet wide and be called High Street. The other streets also received English names, King, Queen, Hanover, York, and Charlotte. And after trees and founder of Pennsylvania, William Penn's fashion, walnut, chestnut, and beech. Pottstown began as one of many iron plantations that were established throughout southeastern Pennsylvania in the first half of the 18th century. The term plantation was applied to these small industrial sites in the same sense that it was used for the colonial settlements of New England and the familiar estates of the South. Self-contained, isolated, and largely self-sufficient, these small communities focused on the production of a marketable product under the control of a proprietary owner or company. Potts Grove was a quaint little town of mainly German-speaking people. The deliberate way in which the town was laid out suggests that John Potts had expectations of a town that was to be larger and more diversified than a simple iron plantation. Unlike many ironworks that were isolated in the backwoods, Pottsgrove Forge stood at the intersection of two major roads, the first between Philadelphia and Reading, and the second which ran from the ferry across the Schuylkill River, northeast to New Jersey, and on the banks of the major river and creek. It had potential as a commercial center serving the needs of travelers and as a depot or relay center for the transportation of goods being moved to and from Philadelphia. As proprietor of such a town, Potts stood to profit not only from the resources of the land used in iron production, 
and the sale of the cleared land for farms as might be expected in a simple iron operation. In addition to those forms of income, the rent or sale of land in the town and the Potts' participation on the businesses that operated there offered a source of income not wholly dependent on the iron industry. Potts' plan was no doubt encouraged by the founding of other towns in the region during this period. The Pens themselves have established a number of successful towns, including Reading. The forge at Pottsgrove stood near the current location of Montgomery County Community College. Pottsgrove Forge was not a large one, which the town eventually outgrew and outlived. 68 double lots facing onto the main street, known as High Street, was a practical plan of a proprietary owner. More lots were laid out in 1762 to the north of the original site between Chestnut and Beach Streets. Potts' intention in planning such a town looked beyond the needs of an iron plantation. He considered many of the town's needs, including the religious interests of its residents. A Quaker meeting house stood on one of the lots of King Street between Penn and Hanover Streets. And in 1764, he invited Reverend Henry Melchior Muhlenberg to discuss the founding of a Lutheran church for the German workers and their families. Evidence for the occupation of the site prior to 1762 is scant, but it may be safely assumed that the small cluster of houses that existed when John bought the tract grew to accommodate the workers of the refinery forge. The Potsgrove Forge ledgers record receipt of rent beginning in 1762 for the town lots. 24 had been rented that year. Reverend Muhlenberg noted in his journal in August of 1764 that 19 houses had been built. The tenants and owners at that time were generally employees at the forge or relatives of John Potts. The little company town of family employees and a few independent businessmen was well established by the time of John Potts' death in 1768. The village continued to grow and diversify in the years that followed. Known generally as Potts Grove for the plantation on which it was situated, the town was occasionally called Pottstown, as, and it was the latter name that was adopted officially in 1815 when the town was incorporated as a borough. The canal opened in Pottstown by 1824 with much excitement and fanfare by the town residents, and the Reading Railroad was then established in Pottstown by 1839. Pottsgrove was an iron plantation and town complete with an iron master's handsome house overlooking the forge workers' homes and commercial buildings on the east side of the Manitani. John had the foresight that his excellent land and its location would increase in value through development and encouragement on his part for the settlement of other interested parties in contrast to the typical rural plantation sites such as Coventry and Warwick. It was this idea that increased Potts' wealth and laid the foundation for the industrial city of Pottstown of the 19th through the 21st centuries. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, by the way, a copy of this uh, ceremony will be included in the uh, time capsule for uh, in 2065 to open up. So uh, make sure your hair looks uh, combed and everything when you come up here. <laughs> now we have remarks from uh, um, Tom Quigley from the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Tom. Thank you, Steve. It's my pleasure to be here today to celebrate this uh, 200th anniversary, this bicentennial of Pottstown. Uh, I've represented the area. Uh, since 2004 with a brief uh, two-year break and now back uh, in here representing uh, half of the borough of Pottstown. And one thing that has always struck me throughout that time that I've represented the area is uh, the spirit of the people here in Pottstown. As Ron Downey uh, outlined in his, his reading that things come and go, trends, different world events that impact a town, but one thing that remains constant are the citizens and their spirit of those citizens to rise to the various challenges. And certainly the borough has faced some of those challenges, but as I said, as I've gone through this area, knocked on a lot of doors over the past years, there's still a, a strong spirit here in Pottstown and a strong community spirit, as we see displayed here today, as we've seen displayed in a number of different events throughout those times. So, you know, it's good to see the positive things that are happening here in Pottstown. It's great to see this Colebrookdale Railroad project, the Carousel project that is finally coming to fruition. So I think that's what we need to emphasize more here in this great community of Pottstown are the positive things the great things that the people here are doing. And I'm proud to be here today to present a, a citation from the House of Representatives with my colleague, uh, Representative Tim Hennessy. And I just want to read the one part here that I think sums up uh, what's going on here today and what's been going on for the past 200 years. 
Throughout its history, Pottstown Borough has been blessed with a citizenry whose hard work and dedication has enabled it to become a vital and valuable presence in this commonwealth, and it looks forward to the future with the same hope that filled the hearts of its earliest settlers. Thank you. Steve, I don't know if we want to present this to you. Yep. Thank you. I'll make sure that uh, this is included in our time capsule. Uh, now we have words from Tim Hennessy, who also represents uh, Pottstown. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to join with all of you here as we celebrate the, uh, this anniversary, uh, 200th anniversary of the Borough of Pottstown's incorporation. Uh, actually, it's about 250, 260 years, I think, that Pottstown has existed as a village, a settlement first, then a village. Uh, but it was incorporated 200 years ago, and we celebrate that today. Uh, Pottstown has always been a beautiful town. Uh, it's the town where I grew up. My father lived, was born and raised up on Grant Street. Uh, my mom was from West Main Street in, in uh, South Pottstown. So we've always considered this our home. I'm glad that after an extended period of time proving myself in the legislature that the powers that be in Harrisburg decided to let me uh, represent half of the borough of Pottstown and to share that responsibility with my good friend Tom Quigley. Uh, when I was being interviewed earlier, someone asked if I remembered the sesquicentennial celebration, uh, and I said that I did, and you've heard from Steve Taroni and Ron Downey a bit about what went on back then, the beards, the... Uh, the, the, the civic pride that was uh, pretty endemic in, in, Pensa, in, uh, in Pottstown uh, at that time. Uh, they, then they asked me whether or not I planned to be here for the next 50 year anniversary and I did some quick calculation. I think I'd have to be about 117 years old, so I'm not making any promises with regard to that. Uh, but I, I do appreciate the invitation to join you today. It's a wonderful event, enjoy yourself, and I'm not gonna stand in your way of getting any food, so I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I'll make sure we include you in on the guest list for 2065. Okay, now we have a presentation uh, with a citation from Senator Bob Mensch. Well, good afternoon and happy birthday, Pottstown. I think uh, the rain's going to hold off for a little bit. I was curious when I was sitting back there, um, I too have some history with Pottstown, but what really struck me is how many of you were here 25 years ago? How many of you are, are Okay. And how many of you are relatively new to Pottstown? Okay. So we have both the, the heritage of Pottstown and the strength of Pottstown as it was represented here, and so many of you have seen the opportunity to come to Pottstown as it reinvigorates itself and begins to grow again. And we've seen the demonstration of that not only with all the, the projects that have been cited, but most especially today celebrating the um, reinvestment in the Colebrookdale Railroad and the reinvestment in the, the carousel. I was thinking a little bit ago as I sat there that uh, if you've ever been to the Plymouth Meeting Mall and you've seen the carousel and you've seen the people having so much fun, that's Pottstown's destiny as well. That will, that will occur. And I, there, there's a little bit of, of uh, luck working here in that the carousel and the railroad are so closely located and there's probably going to be some synergy between the two activities, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, my dad worked at Firestone uh, for most of his life, raising uh, myself and my four younger brothers. Uh, I, I remember Pottstown quite vividly uh, visiting, and I remember all the industrial might that used to be in Pottstown. And I'm old enough to remember when the media was writing in the 80s and the 90s about the, the Rust Belt and about the disappearance of the smokestack industries. And that's what happened to Pottstown. We had a lot of heavy industry here. And so we have begun to evolve Pottstown, and Pottstown is becoming strengthened in other areas today. Uh, in, in whatever small part I play, uh, we play in the legislature, I'm happy to be able to do that for a community that gave me and my family so much. In closing, I want to say, uh, and I always get people afterward that will stop me and ask me, 
were telling me that they had a similar experience. But I studied music at Lamb's Music Store uh, for uh, many years with a gentleman by the name of Les Weiss, who was one incredible reed player. Uh, so if there's anybody out there that had a similar experience, share it with me. I'd be happy to, uh, to recount that with you. And Steve, we do have a, uh, a congratulatory message for you, for the uh, barrel. On behalf of the, uh, the 50th anniversary, it reads very similar to uh, Representative Quigley, so uh, I'd like to just present that to you now, Steve. This also will be included in the uh, time capsule, and Senator Manch also wants an invitation to 2065. All right, now we have words, or we have a presentation of a plaque by John Guest, who happens to be cousin of Nathaniel. Yes. And um, he's going to be, he's from the State Association of Boroughs. Thank you very much. It's great being here today. <laughs> uh, first, I, I'd uh, like to say I'm also here as mayor of the borough of Rurisford, and I'd like to bring the congratulations of the borough the borough government to Pottstown on their 200th. But I'm also here as a member of the board of directors of the uh, Pennsylvania State Burrs Association. And I have a plaque to present today to the borough of Pottstown, which reads, Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs, certificate of recognition is presented to Pottstown Borough on the occasion of the 200th anniversary as a borough in the county of Montgomery Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, PSAB extends its best wishes for continued success and a prosperous future. Thank you. Thank you again. Next, we have remarks from Congressman Ryan Costello from the U.S. House of Representatives. Well, Pottstown Pride is alive and well. It's a pleasure to be with you. I recall uh, from 2002 to 2008, I actually worked in Pottstown about a block away, and I'd always enter Pottstown up 100, turn right on King Street. And that building, the carousel building, I always thought was such a neat, beautiful building. And the question was always, what do you do with it? And the vision and the leadership of George Wasnock and the generosity of the county commissioners and, and a number of stakeholders in the community to make that a reality is very, very exciting. I think the same can be said for Nathaniel Guest. Uh, he's a visionary. And everybody involved in the Colebrookdale rail line, that's a success story. That brings people to Pottstown. This is a phenomenal community. You combine the history with the people of Pottstown and you have something very, very special. I'm looking to be back here at the ripe young age of 88 in 2065 to open up the, uh, what are we calling that? The capsule. I won't even be able to, I won't, I won't, who knows what I'll be like at 88 years old. I want to do one other thing. Steve, come on up. This man, if I could take a point of privilege here, has given almost two decades of public service to this borough. We are lucky, we are thankful, we are grateful for everything that you've done for Pottstown, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. And uh, Ryan, please give my regards in 2065 uh, to the citizens of the town. Uh, before I continue, there's a couple people I want to note. Um, we have two former borough, ma borough managers, uh, Jason Bokes, if you want to raise your hand, Jason. He's over there in the back. And Admiral Bob Jones. We also have with us former Mayor Bonnie Heath. Raise your hand, Bonnie. Uh, we have with us Councillor Kopp, who happens to be the chairman of the Bicentennial. Councillor Wayne's over here. Councillor Kirkland, I saw him somewhere. Joe, you still here? Yep, over here. Uh, Councillor Miller, she was here up by the pet stand. I don't know if she's down here or not. And uh, we also have uh, Councillor Proxel. Uh, he's over here. We also have Dr. Uh, Sparagana from the school district. You still here? Yep, over here. Uh, we have Ron Williams as school director. He's over here somewhere. 
in the back. And we also have uh, Polly Wynn, a school director. Polly, where are you at? There she is, okay. Okay, continuing on, I dropped this bombshell on our chairman um, just about 10 minutes ago. And uh, this says it's a letter from 1965. Don't know what's in it, but it's addressed to the general chairman, Pottstown Bicentennial Celebration in the year of 2015. And it was typewritten on here too, by the way. And uh, they, all, they had their own uh, uh, return address on here, so I guess we can send it back to them uh, when we're done. But anyway, I'm gonna have her come up here, open it up, and read it. I think it's wonderful that everyone showed up today. I think we had a really, really great show. And I, we couldn't have done this all without our Park and Rec Director, Mike Lenhart. If you could give him a round of applause, please. Okay, I'll read this to everyone. It's the Pottstown Sesquicentennial Committee. To General Chairman Bicentennial Celebration in Pottstown, PA in the year of 2015. What a wonderful time you will have as a general chairman. I have completely enjoyed my job and sincerely hope your committee will be as helpful to you as mine has been to me. By the year 2015, I suppose the town will be completely automated and helicopters will have replaced automobiles. You will probably arrive at the bicentennial office with each day by subway underground or land on the roof with your atomic propelled gyro belt. Possibly you may be Russian, Chinese, Negro, or white. Maybe by this time our town or even our country may have ceased to exist. I hope not. At the date of this writing, I am 37 years of age and live at 1052 Feist Avenue. My wife is Eleanor and my children are Pamela Ann and Thomas Robert. My children should be around in 2015 as they are only 11 and nine years of age in this year of 1965. I don't expect to be living, but if at all, the ripe old age of 87, I happen to be around, please call on me to come forth from my wheelchair and I will be glad to help you in any way that I can. We hope that you enjoy reading the material contained in this time capsule. We have picked everything well to withstand the elements in time. We wish that our forefathers had the knowledge and convictions to provide us with the opportunity to read of their pit present with you with the same look to the future as we have provided to you. With the fondest good wishes of the 1965 Sesquicentennial Committee, and with the hope that your celebration is as successful as ours, I remain yours for the future of Pottstown, PA. John W. Laval, Jr. Thank you. Were there any relatives uh, of John here? Well, we'll make sure we do our best to see if we can contact them. And uh, uh, as we will with a lot of these items, there's a lot of personal items that are up here addressed to individuals. We're going to do our best to try and get them to those individuals. We want to do some archiving and so forth. And all these items will find a home at the Pottstown Historical Society, uh, which is located on High Street. Remember, uh, history is our only way of... Uh, preserving our future. History learned, history cherished. Thank you all for coming out. Have a good day. Yearbook, uh, 65, I think my neighbor graduated in 65. And I'm from the, I'm from the east end of Pottstown. And I was just curious, I just wanted to see if he was in here. I know his sister graduated in 67, I think he graduated in 65, so I was going to kind of take a quick look here. Um, looks like it survived pretty well, the book. I, it definitely does, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit, uh, yeah. well, it's a little bit humped there from the weather, I guess. Probably back a little further, if he's here, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there he is. You found him. Yep. Well, well, hey, Queen Street, there he is. Okay. Good looking guy. Yeah, that's my neighbor. I'm standing here with Eric Brenlinger, and uh, he's uh, recently retired from the Air Force. And he uh, was at our bicentennial uh, opening, and there are two letters, I guess, from your great grandfather. Um, could you give us a little bit of information, what he had in there? You don't have to get too personal, but just some items in general, what was in it? 
Um, it was just a, a simple note, uh, kind of reintroducing himself. Uh, I was the namesake, the youngest grandchild, four years old, when he wrote the letter back in 1965. And so he uh, wanted to carry on, I guess, kind of his pride in this, uh, this area and uh, in Pottstown. And um, he basically just stated that uh, uh, in recognition of his family, he wanted to include something in the time capsule. And um, the time capsule consisted of some good family photos that we have not seen before. A couple names of uh, his parents, which again, our, our history basically kind of ended with him in Pottstown. Uh, my dad was also a career military officer. So for the last 60 years, we've been serving and moving around to 20 different locations. So we don't have a hometown. So truly the last place it was pretty stable could have been Pottstown with uh, Leo Brenlinger, who was his name. But uh, you know, in the envelope was just some, some good photos. There's a, a first issue stamp from a, some music uh, stamp, which is pretty cool, but uh, uh, something that kind of corroded. But uh, he just uh, wanted to include, uh, like I said, show, I think, pride in this town and uh, extend that down through the generations. So uh, I just happened to find it going through my retirement paperwork last month uh, in an old family from my father. We, I was uh, gathering all the stuff together and I found this envelope just two weeks before July, because I thought it was going to be in July that it was going to be opened. And I contacted the borough hall and they said, no, it hadn't been opened yet. My sister lives in Reading. My dad still lives in Langhorn, and so it was just, I could be here, and so how, how would I not come to, uh, you know, support his uh, uh, inclusion of me in this time capsule? So. That's really neat. I mean, especially with you finding it two weeks uh, before the actual opening, and how many years did this envelope sit there for, for telling you to, you know, you need to be in Pottstown, you know? Well, it's just fantastic. It's, it's, a great, it's a great story, and it's kind of like, you got to make it happen when that happens because I you know he'd be proud to be standing up there. He made it to 87. He was, 80, he was 75 when he included it in the capsule. Uh, my father is still alive, but he really can't travel very well or he would have been proud to be here too. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a great, uh, I think a great day for your town and 50 years from now, uh, again, we won't be here, but uh, I don't have that great grandkid right now, but uh, I'm going to put something in for the next one for my generation to follow along with the original letter. Thanks. That that I was hoping you would do because you know that's where the memories, cherished memories, uh, continue to move on. And uh, your your grandfather's looking down and he's smiling and knowing that he he got through to you. So thank you very much and thank you for your service to our country. Also, well, I'm proud to have done it. and I'm proud to have been here. So thank, thank you. you very much. You know, I gotta say, when you read that letter, that just kind of touched me just imagining what that person writing it back in 65. I know, and I was here in 1965, I think I was in seventh grade, I was around 13, and I remember the bicentennial very well. I mean, it was just a wonderful celebration, and everybody just kind of came together. It was, it was, it was wonderful. Did you take a look? What are some other things you, you, you like when you saw what was in the capsule? Oh, uh, so many letters, so many photographs. Uh, th there was so much involvement. Um, I would love to open the letters up and see what said in And There was a penny from 1960 in there that they had laminated. And um, it, was, it was just really neat looking at it. It's a little, a little musty smelling, but, you know, mostly everything, about 85% of everything uh, survived. So yes, it was. It, I don't know if you saw. There it is. That's the huge. That's the capsule it was in. It was welded shut, and they had to take a torch to open it up. So a couple things got burned a little bit, but everything survived pretty well. Though even though the flood probably got it in '72, you know. But uh, yeah. So at least it didn't get too wet, right? No, we dried, I took everything in the back one boiler room and they laid everything out and dried it out. So a lot of the pictures are curled up, but they're very good. The pictures are in very good shape, yeah. Okay, so you sold the time capsule. Yeah, so what did you, what did you find in there? Um, we, there was a lot of people looking at it, so we didn't get to see a lot of the items. Um, but we did get to see a picture of the Schuller Hotel, and my grandfather, Dominic Viscardi, was in the picture. And my mom was able to point out a few of the other people that she knew that worked at the Schuller Hotel. So it, it kind of meant a lot to our to our family. It was neat. Uh, that was before your time, though, was yes, it? Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> what was he doing in the picture? That um, he was a chef at the Schuller Hotel and very good friends with the owners as well, um, Theodora Gavadis. Did you expect to see any any relatives any pictures today? We were kind of hoping, but we weren't really sure. We weren't sure what was going to be in there. So I'm glad that we got to see. 
It's just amazing to see where we've come since 1965. The letter that was read uh, by Mr. Laval, uh, about, from Mr. Laval spoke about technology and the fact that possibly helicopters would be replacing cars that could come to pass at some point in time. We would be living in the world of the Jetsons. You know, I thought that letter was so cool too. I mean, here it was 50 years ago, and it, it just it felt great. It was weird. It oh, was it's re really cool, really cool. And what a great turnout of people on a day where you have an opportunity to have some great food and fellowship, listen to the uh, historical perspective of this community. I thought that Amy Reese did a great job of speaking to the initial beginning of Potts Grove, which then became Pottstown, uh, iron ore, and, and those types of uh, uh, manufacturing processes that uh, were the guideline of the community. So really an exciting day. Ron, first question, were you around here for the 65 celebration? What are your memories? Well, I've been here 80 years. Yes, I was around, but I wasn't active in uh, borough government then. I had just gotten married the year before, and uh, I, my job uh, took me away. From, so uh, I, I remember some of the stuff that was in the paper, but I wasn't part of it. Over the years, what do you think... Pottstown's best feature was and what do you think it is now? Well, uh, cer certainly we were industrialized and we were, you know, we had 32,000 citizens. We're down to 22,000 now. Uh, you know, and I'll delineate some of that uh, during the uh, uh, verse that I'll be reading. It's, it's a retrospective of Pottstown. Uh, these 200 years, and I've been here 80 of the 200. Uh, so uh, the other thing, uh, a, a community is a is a, di a like Pottstown is a dynamic thing. It ebbs and flows just like life does, and uh, I, I believe we have yet to see our greatest day, and I believe a lot of it is due to uh, we are becoming a college town with the Montgomery County Community College. Congressman, I, I, the, the turnout here, you have to be encouraged to see all these people. Absolutely. And we see this every year for this event. Uh, today, though, we have a special event. We're opening the time capsule for our centennial, and I think that's an extra draw for today. And it's still, there are a lot of people around like yourself who really care about this borough, and do you think they're going to still be here 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road? Absolutely. The, the seated council right now, we started six years ago, turned the finances around, we're finally stable, and the economy in general in the country has changed. So we took the stance of we'll get prepared for when the, the boom comes, and hopefully we're better prepared than our competitive municipalities, and I think we are. We've got a new borough uh, garage going up while the municipal works building. We just ordered a brand new million dollar fire truck to keep people safe. We're doing well. Like a lot of us people, because I grew up around here too, and I'd like to see this pot sign really survive. Do you still have that civic pride? I mean, are, do you think, oh God, I want to see this place around for another 200 years? Um, I've had this feeling for a very long time. Uh, going through school, I always, we, we go down High Street and through the town and I see the potential, the historic homes and just the, the neat buildings that we have and just wanting to see business and, you know, people living a healthy, happy life here. So, yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think Pottstown's best feature is? Oh, best feature. Uh, oh, no, there's a lot of great features. Uh, I just think it's uh, the people. Uh, I think we have... Um, just a really energized, engaging community, and that community, um, over time, they have a resilience about them. Um, just my family being from Pottstown, just the history here. Uh, today we're at this event where uh, we're celebrating 200 years of the borough being established, and look around us. Uh, we ha just have such a great crowd, and um, I think that's our best feature. Do you think there's going to be enough people of, of your age to keep this kind of feeling going in 20, 30, 40 years? I do, and I think that um, communities are changing now where we're attracting people that want to 
uh, work, live, and play in one environment. Pottstown's really built out that way and uh, can cultivate that for, um, I would say, a millennial generation. Uh, so I do. I think there's good things to come. Uh, the people are very friendly. Um, I've been here since 2001. I got married in 2001. I could have lived anywhere along the 422 corridor. Uh, I chose Pottstown. Actually, I, I, put, I told people to Pottstown chose me, you know, because uh, it reminds me of home. I'm from a small town, Western Pennsylvania, uh, and Pottstown reminds me of my home, so I, you know, I chose Pottstown. What made you decide because you joined public service? What made you decide to get involved? Uh, I grew up on a farm with uh, 10 brothers and sisters, and uh, uh, my parents instilled um, community service in me, and um, it, it stayed in me. You know, whenever I came here, I was looking for something to do. Um, I have an architectural background, uh, and uh, you know, I was asked to run for office, and I did. What do you think when you see all these people here? It's got to feel good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a big turnout, you know, and you know, we weren't sure what the uh, weather's going to be like. It's a little cloudy or sunny earlier, but uh, it's a big turnout, and, and we're happy that uh, that you know it came out the way it is. So you're sampling the food. What, what, do you, what have you had that you like and what do you still want to try? Well, I'm trying my best to uh, pace myself because I'm trying to get everything, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so I pretty much took, uh, took care of one side of, the, uh, of all the uh, booths. I'm, I'm working on the other side now. So, you know, by the end of the day, I'll have everything, uh, you know, uh, to taste it out. So. so what are some of your memories you said your dad, or your memories as a child around here? Dad worked at Firestone. Uh, and so... Uh, it, it was really a lot of fun. Most of his friends that he worked with were here in this uh, general area. So we'd come and visit a lot, and uh, the, the folks were always a whole lot of fun. Uh, it was a great culture, great society. I studied music at Lambs for a number of years. So I have a lot of fond memories of shopping in Pottstown, walking the street, uh, meeting a lot of people, just talking. It was a very social area. It still is. It's a great town. You know, it, it's had its up, and there's some places that, that have disappeared, but it seems like it keeps coming. It has that resiliency. I was thinking about that earlier today. Um, in fact, yesterday we were talking about Pottstown at another event, and we were talking about Levitt's Furniture Store, believe it or not. Uh, of course, that's no longer there, but you know, you're, you're right. One goes away, another one comes in, and, and there is this evolution, and it continues to go, and Pottstown is evidence of that. It's, it's had a, a few ups and downs, but I, I think it's, it's on the right trajectory again. And a lot of great leadership. You know, you've got Colebrookdale Railroad, you've got the, the carousel. Uh, of course, uh, exciting things today with opening the, uh, the the time capsule after 50 years and take a look back and see what was happening. Uh, I was taking, I was studying music here 50 years ago, so it'll be interesting for me as well. I'm sure, it'll uh, evoke a lot of other memories too. It's got to be encouraging to see this many people here too. It's great. Um, I, I've uh, been to this uh, what I call the foodie the last couple of years. Uh, I just came from Lansdale Church Service, so I haven't had a chance to treat myself yet, but I'll get there. Uh, they always have great treats, great food here. And again, you just sit down and start talking. A lot of people don't realize my position, so I just get a chance to, to chat and talk and, and get their impressions of Potsdam as well. It's always very positive. Okay, Jenny, seriously, I can't believe you were around here at 65 and old enough to know about it, but... <laughs> what, were, what were some of your memories? Uh, I remember being here for the uh, uh, parade in 1965. There was a parade. I remember being on High and Hanover Street, and I'm so proud to be part of the borough and back here now for the for the next celebration. <laughs> if you and I have been asked if you could bring back one building, like for me, I remember as a kid going to uh, the Schuller Hotel to pick up a Warner bus. Is there one building that you miss that you wish you could just pop right back up? Um, let me think. Probably, I loved shopping at Ellis Mills. I love shopping at Kessler's. We did all that shop. Milton's bought all my kids' clothes there. I started grandkids, Milton's, uh, Milton's children's clothing. Robert Miller's shopped in all those shops. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, one other question. Uh, do you have any favorite food you like? Uh, mostly seafood. And we have some great restaurants down here. Lily's, Grumpy's. We support them all the time. I mean, we're fortunate to have some great places down here. It's 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 great being in Pottstown. Just so proud of the Burr Secretary now, and proud to be part of Pottstown. Live in Pottstown, work in Pottstown, and hopefully here for a few more years. <laughs> a little more weight, but other than that, he still looks the same. Oh, so that's Howard Brown's dad. What were you? He graduated in '65. Yes. yes. He did a good job as a dad, too. Yes. Most definitely, and an uncle, and a husband. <laughs> He's awesome, thank you.
Uh, Representative, from what you've seen in Pottstown over the years, what do you, would you say is the Pottstown's best feature? I think it's the people. You know, I, I've represented the area. Uh, I represent the area from 2005 to 2012. I lost in 2012 and got reelected in 2014. And I've done a lot of knocking on doors in Pottstown, a lot of talking to people. And I think it's really the people in this town that do have that pride, do have that civic duty, uh, sense of uh, belonging here. And these types of events where we bring everybody together certainly show the best of Pottstown. You know, over the years, it's like it seems like there's always a driving force people to make this town better, to keep it alive, and and it just amazes me that it's still going like that. Yeah, I, I think so, and, I, and you know, you always see in the in the media and in the, the news there there is sometimes a bad rap, and and certainly Pot Sound, like any urban center, has issues. There's no there's no de denying that or doubting that, but I think that there's not enough attention paid to the good things that are going on in Pottstown. And you know, we have video ray up here, uh, a new business that's come in, starting to refurbish some of the downtown buildings. We have a lot of things going on here with the carousel, which is what this festival is about today. Uh, we have the Colebrookdale Railroad coming in. So there's a lot of good things going on here. And as I said before, just as I'm out talking to people, most people are worried about the same issues that everyone else in the Commonwealth is worried about. Nobody really tells me how bad things are going here in Pottstown or how, you know, they don't accentuate the negative. Let's put it that way. And it can't be a negative to this many people that come out like this, right? Correct. You know, and I think not only is it just the people in Pottstown, but this event always draws people from Chester County, Berks County, the lower part of Montgomery County. So I think that, you know, people are focusing on Pottstown and seeing the good things that are going on here. Tom, first question, uh, Pottstown, what do you think the best feature about Pottstown is? Well, I'll tell you what, this, uh, this downtown, uh, even though it's in the shape that it's in, um, has always been a spectacle as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the, the big uh, four lanes, how wide it is, I mean, it's always been great. Um, what we have going on here now, it's just hopefully a lot of people think this, that Pottstown's coming back to the way it was in the 50s and 60s, even in the 70s. What has kept you around? Because you've been around here a while, you probably could have gone there. What's kept you around? Well, I'll tell you what, as you know, Al, I was pretty fortunate. I could have moved a couple different places. Uh, but Pottstown, just that quaint little town. I know people say things about that, but um, it's, a, it's a great little town. And my family basically has kept me here. Had, uh, you know, four kids and been married for a long time. Um, where else would you want to be in Pottstown? You know, it, it's like growing up back in the 50s. I, my dad had six sisters, and they all lived in this borough within like about a couple of miles from each other. And it's just, you're right, it's family, and you still have family around here. And do you still see a lot of people you know? Oh, absolutely. I come out here. I'm, I'm covering the event today, and it's really hard to, to cover because besides wanting to eat, which I can't do when I'm working, you're every five minutes you're stopping and saying hello to somebody like yourself. You know, and it's it's great to see people here. Uh, what food do you like? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm kind of like an old very best guy. I love going in there. One of my daughters, my youngest one, we still go in there every now and then. And, um, but um, I like uh, all the things that Ice House has and the butcher and the barbecue. I like to see uh, Adam working over there all the time. You don't get to see him doing that too often. Uh, Representative, first question, do you remember the 65 celebration here? Sesquicentennial, yeah, I sure do. I was a senior in high school when that was happening, and yes, I remember it very well. And I've been asking, I mean, a lot of things have changed about High Street, but a lot of things have still hung around. Does any of these things bring back memories here? Well, you look at Weichencorn's building's been here since forever. And that was, that was uh, back in, well, I don't know when it started, 150 years ago, I think. Uh, I don't know if it's always been right there at that location, but it's been that, at that location all my life. I've known it, recognized that building, I'd recognize it anywhere. You know, one thing that occurred to me, you have people that, that weren't around in 65 and they wanted to keep the town going. You, and it seems like you still have a driving force of folks that want to keep this the town that it's been. Oh, sure. If you look around, a lot of the people who are walking High Street today that have that interest. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful town. It really is. It's, uh, there's a, if there's a secret to it, I think, it's the fact that it's got the wide main street. It, it, it gives a certain openness that you don't get in some of the other towns and boroughs uh, that, you know, around Chester County or Montgomery County or Burks. And it's just, it's a fun place to be. Here's a question. I don't think any of us will be here. What do you think it'll be here in, in 50 years? Uh, well, I, am, I hope I'm here with a gray beard. But, but aside, aside from that, I, you know, I'm going to, I'll bet on this, the, the, so the old Security Trust Bank building up here where the Tri-County the tri Chamber is now and, and, uh, the, the Brick House uh, bar and restaurant, 
White's and Corns would go be there. The, the, Patriot, the Patriot building, I think of the, the first federal building from Ray Elliott, God rest him. He built that back in the, I think, in the 60s. I can remember when that corner was occupied by Benson's Drugstore. Oh, wow. And uh, we used to pick up on the northwest corner of the intersection, we used to pick up the Werner bus uh, company, or bus to get home yep. and uh, after school every day. It was, yeah, it, Pottstown's a beautiful town. Any foods you want to try or have tried that you like? Uh, you know what? I've, I've tried the uh, crab bake or macaroni and cheese. I've heard that's good. And I'm sure it's very good. Uh, I've, I've tried it before, so I'll try it again today. And there's also a crab cake sandwich I'm going to try. I'll, I guess I'm in my seafood mode today. <laughs>if you had to bring back one building, when growing up, I always liked the Schuler House. I kind of wish that was, but if you had to bring back one building, what would you bring back? Oh, I'd probably go with the Bar Arcade. You know, it had all kind of vendors in there, and then it had skating in the back, and at the end, you know, flea markets. And the, the farmer market, it was a real farmer's market there, you know. We have pictures of it. So it was all the vendors. It was full of vendors and, and good ones. Bruner from East Greenville, the old bakery, and, and that kind of stuff. If you were to put one thing in a time capsule for 50 years from now, what would you put in? Uh, I've been thinking about that for months because so I want to do that. I, I think a, a packet of old pictures. Uh, I have quite a few old Pottstown pictures and some of my favorite pictures I might put in there. Uh, the buildings that they tore down like right across the street, like you said, Hotel Schuller. And some good pictures like that, more than like me. What do you think, is, last question, what do you think Pottstown's best feature is? Well, they're trying, they're trying real hard. You hear a lot of people complain they're not doing this and that, but they are, I know, I know they are. And it's slowly coming around, if you stop and really look at it, and not just start want to complain all the time, sit back and look at it and analyze it. You have to admit, it really came a long way in the last couple of years, regardless of all the day, day sayers or whatever they call them, say it's, it's starting to look pretty good. John, first question, what do you think is Pottstown's best feature? Well, I think probably the, the best feature is that it is a small hometown America. So all of the things that we can relate to, what, what many of us knew in the past as, as hometown America, they're all right here in Pottstown. What are some of your memories? You came here in 69. What are some of your memories from back in the 70s? Well, you know, when I first got here in 1969, I had just gotten out of college and uh, came for an interview. Uh, for my first uh, teaching job here and I walked around town and, and immediately I said to myself this is the type of place I want to live, I want to make my home. The architecture, friendly people, uh, a great, even in 1969, just like today in 2015, a lot of great activities going on, uh, like the Carousel of Flavor today, so it, it just reminded me of, of everything that I was, I knew I wanted. Where do you see Pottstown 50 years from now? Well, 50 years from now, that's, gonna, that's, that's pretty interesting. Hopefully, we still maintain our small town, hometown America flavor, only with the progression of technology and, and advancements that will exist 50 years from now. Do you think we still have a lot of pe like, people like yourself? Do you think those people, people like that will be around to keep the, the small town flavor going? There is no doubt in my mind that uh, there will be many people that will still want what exists in small towns because they will be migrating from that experience of the big city and find out that the big city has a lot 
things to offer, but you can't com compete with the convenience and the, the just uh, very friendly feeling in a small town. I can do from my house uh, in Pottstown, I can do virtually everything I need by walking three or four blocks in any direction. And my last question, what, what are some of the foods that you've tried or want to try? Well, uh, there's still some things from Catillo's that I want to try. There's some uh, crab cakes that I want to try. But most of all, the Pottstown High School Culinary Arts Trojan Grill has some great miniature pies that I'm dying to get at. Okay, Steve, first of all, you said you have memories of the 65 celebration. If, yes, if you I could do. share them. Yes, I do. I was in sixth grade, and I remember coming down to the parade, and I remember seeing uh, a lot of times the period clothing worn by the people. Um, there was a group um, of men called the Brothers of the Brush. I guess that was the thing to do, to grow beards and mustaches. And it was a, a great time. I, you know, I do remember a lot of, of course, downtown Pottstown was vibrant, and, um, and shops were open and everything going on. Yeah, I grew up in Pottstown, too, and, this, and it, there are some things that are still around from back that, that time period. Oh, yes, very best. Naturally, Weiss and Corns, uh, you know, and I'm sure there's others. I don't want to go down through. I might miss one, one or two. But, uh, you know, the ones that aren't here anymore, they're being replaced by fine businesses, and uh, we're coming back. What do you think Pottstown needs to do over the next couple of years to keep succeeding? Continue with uh, getting the word out that uh, we are a great place, and uh, sometimes uh, perception of uh, what's out there in reality or, or extremes and uh, we know we got a great town we have a lot of people a lot of businesses that are investing and uh, in fact in the the last year I forget this close to six to eight million dollars was invested by people buying businesses and and buildings and so forth downtown that are going to be reinvesting and uh, doing some uh, uh, revitalization of course we just got half a million dollars from the county for the carousel 250 for the carousel and 250 going to the train that's going to be building a station up across from Pottsgrove Manor, which is going to be a great economic tool for us. Kind of a tough question here, but where do you see Pottstown in 50 years? Oh, I don't know. I, it's hard to say. I know I won't be here. Yeah, <laughs> I would, I'd be over 110. So uh, I, uh, you know, I think it's going to be uh, a great, continue to be a, a great little town, and that's what's neat about it. It's always going to have its persona of being a neat little community. And uh, I mean, we can't grow anymore. We're, you know, grown within. And so we just redevelop. And I think it's going to continue and it'll be, uh, you know, great Pottstown, USA. George, first of all, were you around for the 60? Do you remember anything about the 65 celebration? You know what? I was in the Army then. I was stationed at Aberdeen Proving Ground. I came home for the celebration. In fact, I brought about three or four Army buddies with me. They had a heck of a good time here in Pottstown. Unfortunately, I don't remember any artifacts. I, don't, I remember the parade. That's about it, to be honest with you. Are you excited to see what comes out of the time capsule? Yes, I am. I'm, um, I wanted to see if, if my name is in there, first of all. I'm sure some of the Mercury articles governing me as a teenager might be in there, so that's a good possibility. What do you think of the turnout here from what you've seen? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, we normally expect uh, four to 6,000 people, and the turnout so far has been just great. And I think that uh, before it closes at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a good turnout. Um, what do you think is Pottstown's best feature at this, or best features? I think it's the people. You know, a lot of people used to say Pottstown has no sense of community. But when you, when you can raise $1.2 million for that carousel with private funding, and when you can take these animals and spend 250 to 350 man or lady hours on painting these animals, all free, all volunteers, Pottstown has a heart, and Pottstown has a very good sense of community. And another thing that sells Pottstown is our architectural features. I mean, you can't... You cannot replace some of these buildings on High Street, King Street, Chester Street, Walnut Street. They're just, this can't be replicated today for the price that it would cost at least anyway. But that's what we're blessed with. Steve, what do you think this carousel flavor says about Pottstown? I, I think it says people in Pottstown like food. <laughs> what, what are some of the, uh, the foods that you've tried so far? I, I had some crab mac and cheese from Lily's Grill. It's delicious. What do you think is Pottstown's best feature at this point? Well, I think uh, great downtown architecture certainly is one of them, and I think that's one of the things that makes this event great. Now, I, I, I don't know, were you around for the 1965 celebration? 64. Okay, so you, you don't remember much about it? No, I don't. I love Pottstown. 
It's my job to promote it. Okay. <laughs> I think this sends a very loud message to anybody that pays attention that Pottstown, number one, is a great place to be all the time, to live, work, and play. What a great event, and it's just, it's all about having fun, having a great time, social events like this, bring people together. It's awesome. What is, is this a pretty good turnout? It seems like it is. Well, actually, I find it interesting because typically I see this kind of a crowd around 2 o'clock. Um, it started at 12, by about 5 of 12 it was already crowded. I think that's the tie-in is the fact that people are aware that at 2 o'clock we're opening the time capsule for the bicentennial event. So I think you see more people here early for that. Have you tried any foods or any foods you're looking forward to trying? I have, and I will continue. <laughs> what, was your, what was your favorite so far? Well, so far all I've had is Lily's Grill, the uh, crab mac and cheese. And as usual, Adam Burke at Lily's Grill, awesome food.